Uh, good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Lakeville Planning Board to order. It is Thursday, March 9th at 7 p.m. We are meeting at the Lakeville Police Station. Uh, first item on our agenda tonight is a continued public hearing for 44 Clear Pond Road. Uh, so the applicant is here. Uh, he has requested a continuance, but I will uh, just give a brief update. And if you'd like to uh, address anything, since our last meeting, uh, we had requested no waivers to be given on the roadway. However, there was one waiver uh, that was discussed between myself, uh, Mark Resnick, uh, and the applicant had uh, followed up with this, that the roadway currently comes at like about a 10 degree angle off of Clear Pond Road. And if we don't allow that waiver, uh, that would mean he would go to Harcourt to put the roadway, uh, which is his right. Uh, and I felt I made the decision to allow him to continue that way. The board hasn't made any decisions, uh, but I anticipate that he will come back with a plan in about a month. That's uh, basically the same plan. Is that accurate? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, Derek Massey, Lake Country Come up to the microphone, yeah, please, just for recording purposes. Derek Massey, Lake Country Club. Uh, there, there were a couple changes that I've asked the engineer to make on the plan as well as far as moving one of the detention basins further away from my neighbor, if possible, because it's going to uh, limit the amount of trees that get cut down on the north side of the road. And, uh, and then, uh, obviously, it add the additional street lights that you guys had asked for before and then work on the drainage. So we're hoping to meet with your town planner sometime either next week or the first, or maybe the first week after that. Okay. Uh, so can I get a motion to continue until the April 13th at 7 p.m. planning board meeting? Second. I have a motion and a second to continue. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So we'll see you in a month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next item on the agenda is a public hearing for site plan review at 13 Main Street. I have a public notice. I'm just going to read into the record. Uh, Lakeville Planning Board, pursuant to the Lakeville Zoning Bylaw Section 6.7 and 7.5, will hold a public hearing on Thursday, March 9th, 2023, at 7 p.m. at the Lakeville Police Station, two, uh, 323 Beverage Street. The purpose of the public hearing will be to re receive information and the public comment for the following site plan review application. 13 Main Street, the applicant Main Street Real Estate Holdings LLC seeks site plan review and approval for a proposed mixed use development with a two story office building located at the front of the property along Main Street. Uh, 19 age qualified residential units located westerly of the office building associated and associated site improvements. Uh, so at this time, uh, Bob, um, do you want to go into anything or do you want me to? Sure, I'd actually uh, like Mike to start things mm -hmm. off. Mr. Chairman, Michael O'Shaughnessy, um, here tonight on behalf of Main Street Real Estate Holdings, LLC. Um, we can give the board a quick overview of the plan, if, if you like, a quick 30-second overview of what's going on, or we can dive right into it, whatever the, the chairman's pleasure is. Uh, so you guys are both... Uh, up to date on a conversation that I had with Jamie today uh, that I followed up with the building commissioner, zoning guy in town. Yeah. Uh, so I think there was some sort of miscommunication and I think that's just something that needs to be worked out just to make sure that the plan that we have in front of us does comply with absolutely the underlying zone deal because the uh, I'll bring everybody up to speed on that conversation was uh, I reviewed the plans, talked to the building commissioner uh, his interpretation is if you look in the back of the plan and do you have the site plan just so we could point that out for the public while we're talking about it there is a delineation 600 feet off of Main Street that delineates between business zoning and residential zoning and it sort of cuts at a diagonal right by the end of the Hammerhead Roadway turnaround yes. through the retention ponds That's right through yes. here so 
the uh, building commissioner, with the conversation I had with him, his understanding is that the mixed use development zoning doesn't have its own dimensional requirements, so it reverts to the underlying zones. And in that case, that would be the business zone. And his understanding is that the setbacks would be at 40 feet. The, the applicant has to plan in with 20 feet because their use is residential. So I think we just need to clarify before we would, you know, approve that if it, and Nate's going to look into it further. If you guys find uh, an avenue within the zoning that he didn't see or I don't know of. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah, um, I spoke with Jamie earlier on. Um, I, I think we're still going forward with this project in one, some way, shape or form. Um, we, we're still waiting for um, review from the, the peer review, I think. So um, whenever this hearing gets continued to, we'll work it out um, with Nate behind the scenes and try to get him to um, get him something in writing that he can act upon. And if he disagrees with us, if he disagrees with us, that, that's fine too. Um, and that would trigger a change to what we're constructing in the rear of the project. But at the, the front of the project, I think the office building would probably remain. So this, we're not, I don't think this is an exercise in futility. Okay, I just, yeah, yeah. and I just don't want people to be spinning their wheels, yep. fu you know, in futile yep. effort. Yep. So, uh, if you don't mind, you want, you guys want to give us a, a, sure. a, a 30 second view of the plan? For 30, 30 second overview. Um, Again, Michael O'Shaughnessy for the applicant. Uh, this building north of our lot is CVS. It's on the corner. You have 79 and 105 right here. Um, across the street is Riverside Drive. We have the office park. Um, to the south of us is the um, storage building that's currently under construction. Um, this is a three acre parcel of land. Um, it's like 3.08 acres. Um, you folks recently approved a form A for this little piece. This little piece was added to this overall parcel. Uh, it's vacant land now. Um, it's basically flat in the front. It rises up to a high point here and it pitches to the back. Uh, this plan calls for a 2200 plus or minus square foot office building in the front um, that faces Main Street and um, 19 age restricted units in the back. Um, these units are two bedroom units. They're about 900 to 1,000 square feet in area, all single level. Um, with respect to the building, you guys kind of got a preview of it. Um, one of the components of your site review bylaws, you, you are now looking at the style of the building and comparing it to what's going on in the neighborhood. So when we, when we did this design, what we looked at is all the, the surrounding buildings in that general area. We looked at the CVS, we looked at the office building across the street, there was some houses down the street. And as you can see, what we've tried to do is take some elements from those buildings and incorporate it into our building. And I think we did a pretty good job of it. We captured the dormers on each end. We have a, a farmer's porch in the front. Um, it doesn't look like a massive building. Um, we've kind of gone out of our way on the design to, to make it look pleasing and, and, and soft so it really fits into the neighborhood. Um, you know, we, we have the, the, the lower roof line that runs on both sides of the building, so I think it, it really breaks up the mass really well. Um, and I think it's an attractive looking building and it'll be very, very good for that site. With respect to our residential units, apologize for the blow up um that's kind of what we're thinking you'll see on the plan that there were some duplex units shown those these would just kind of get mashed together a little bit but this is this is this is not the final design but it's more intended to give you guys a, a flavor of what's going on um, our site has been designed such that we comply with stormwater management standards which means we're not increasing the rate of volume of runoff from the site it's all held on the site and um, that's currently being reviewed by your consultant. Um, we have a hammerhead turnaround right here for the fire truck. Um, uh, I think Niles had met the uh, fire chief. Yeah, we have a letter. Yes, I think that was good. Uh, this is, right now, uh, it's intended to be private trash pickup. So every unit, including the office building, will have its own barrels and stuff and we'll come in and pick it up and take it away. Um, I think Mark had a comment about um, dumpster pad about a dumpster pad, pad but we, we thought about that 
And originally we had it here, but we thought this, this spot would be better for um, parking for a, a UPS truck or whatever it is to keep it out of the way. Uh, but that, that's our intent right now, to keep it as um, private trash pickup. Um, and that's, that's our 30 second overview, or a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but that kind of gives you a flavor of what we're planning to do on the site. Okay. Um, so one for you, Bob, when this all goes through the process at the end, we would like a set of building elevations included within the site plan. So when we sign off, just because of the architectural standards, mm -hmm. we want that included. Absolutely. Uh, one to the applicant, Bo, uh, just so you know, talked to Nate today uh, with the design he uh, may have foresaw anticipated if you needed to create any easements or if there was like an exclusive use easement for like if these units the residential units you wanted to create a space that's like that's their 10 feet around the building that if it's an exclusive use easement that would actually take away from the acreage of the lot that don't no longer counts towards the acreage and it would create a non-conformity so you just you <coughs> need to be cautious in if you do put any easements on anything they can't be exclusive use um mr chairman we did receive a letter from um uh, mark this afternoon mark Resnick. yep um i don't think we have any issues with any of the, the comments that were raised except for the very last one about a sidewalk and and, and i guess i'm going to ask the board um, what do what you guys feel about that particular comment? Uh, I mean, I, I assume that would be, it, the intent would be a sidewalk, the length of the roadway. The is length what of the roadway on the uh, north side of the mm -hmm. road, so it would uh, come in and then uh, just pass like those upper six units and then uh, down and loop down to um, Rhode Island Road and then back toward Main Street so that uh, <clears throat> yeah I think you know problem. because you you have 19 units so a restricted housing and people will be wanting to go out and CBS and, and so on and so forth and begin to, to walk in that neighborhood so my only comment, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that I don't think we have any problem with providing the sidewalk on the north side of this road. It's just extending it out. We have a couple of problems with that. Um, it's actually, if we're trying to get the seat to this intersection, it would be a shorter walk for people to walk out this way, which we'd be providing the sidewalk for, and then go this way. We don't control the land. It comes to a point here. There is no sidewalk back there. And there's, there's no, no sidewalk in Rhode Island Road. So, um, I mean, you know that this is a newly constructed roadway. They didn't put sidewalks on it. And we don't control the land there. It comes to a point here. So we would have to do something with one of the abutting parcels just to be able to do that. And we'd have to get permission from DOT to do that. And I just, we just don't feel like that's a, a, something that's necessary unless the board actually, actually absolutely wants it well I, I do think bringing something out a walking path to 105 makes a lot of sense uh but i can agree with you too uh, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the whole board so if you guys have a different opinion but i do think you know if you build it they will come if you had a sidewalk to get out to main street yeah people are probably going to want to walk and they would utilize that however i would agree fully that sending them out the back would probably be a hindrance yeah i would agree with that i mean so I, mean, I think the residents would, would love to have access to the CVS. I think it's wouldn't be necessary. So if you do it that way, I find my name. But okay, great. So um, <clears throat> the sidewalk, it, it's pretty clear where it'll be adjacent to the uh, office building. But when you get up to the residences, what will it be? Just segmented with everybody's driveway? So, so I kind of well, think that that's, that's, that's kind of going to be dovetailed and our, our conversation with, with Nate. Um, right now, uh, based on this layout, I, I don't know, how would, you, how would you propose to do it, Bob? The only way we could do it is exactly what you're saying. We would have run it right up against the, uh, this is Cape Cod Berm, so there should be a little bit of a separation if we could. So we'd run like a four foot wide sidewalk, maybe with a foot separation from the berm mm -hmm. and just run it right along here. And then, yeah, it would have to cross the driveways just like every other uh, sidewalk would. So what do you think of that, Mark? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of figured that's what they oh, okay. have to right. do. Um, Again, the north side, you're only crossing yeah. four driveways. Yeah. South right. side, you'd be crossing 14. Right. Right. Yeah, and you wouldn't really. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense to do it on the other side. Um, but yeah, we can. I can sit down with you and try and figure out the best way to, to at least get something over along that side there. So. Yeah. Just throwing it out there, where it's not multiple. Uh, parcels it's a single parcel owned by one person uh what about a landscaped walking path behind those units is that something that's in yeah. the car it's just so you'd have a, a back here yeah a physical sidewalk from the turn in the road out so going behind the units with the well, then, do those people get like much privacy? Yeah, everybody? Like, don't, they're 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 I'm just throwing it out there. It's either that or you're I right. know. I, I get it. I get it too. So, yeah. so I guess, I guess the the answer is we'll take a closer look at it and come up with something. Maybe there's some yeah. hybrid yeah. approach that'll that'll work. I mean, that that's what I thought. So people do like sidewalks. I mean, they just mm -hmm. they they do. The, right. If the choice is to walk on that street or the sidewalk, they'll be on the sidewalk. So yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So, do, uh, any other planning board members have any? Comments, questions, concerns, Peter? Um, parking for this building um, seems extremely limited and very tight. Uh, the, the, the parking. Um, 24 feet across. It, it, be, it meets what's required by zoning and it's based on the square footage. If we could squeeze a few more spaces in there, I mean, if, if, if you think we need some more, we can look and get in some more spaces, but I'm not sure we can, we can fit it there. In your, in your presentation, you said 22 or 2,400 square feet, where it's two floors. It, you, you really should present it as 4,800 square feet. It's a, yeah, it's 4,800 square feet. So that feet. no one's just... Uh, you, 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 fair enough. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, a, I'm thinking footprint, right? Yeah, you're right. Um, and it's 14 spots, right? Plus two handicap? Yeah, yes. 16 okay. total. I, I just think it's super tight. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, eight, eight foot, um, eight foot between the ends of the two cars, right? No, 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 no. I, it's twenty four, it's like twenty four feet. feet from the lane. So it's a, it's a, <clears throat> the, the space twenty four foot lane, and then another space. Yeah, the lane is the line is oh, touching the two. Oh, I see. <laughs> all right. Yep. Yeah, I can see where that would be. It confused. looks almost like parking line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Continue. Twenty four between the. Okay. Touch the painted line that was shown on the plan, so yep. it gets confused. You're right. Mm. That, that's confusing, but and that that's be, what it is. And that it, would it meets, be tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You couldn't do it. You literally couldn't back in or get uh, or get into no, or get that's out better. of the space. Yeah. It conforms to uh, what's required in town. Okie dokie. Do you have anything else, Peter? No. Michelle, do you have any comments? Um, yeah, so, I mean, two spots per uh, unit, that's fine. I know it conforms with the zoning bylaws, but um, I would be concerned that any guests may block the, the emergency turnaround there, or I guess you're planning on having them parking up front. Like, are you designating any guest spots? Um, right now, we don't have any guest spots shown. Okay. Um, and then I was curious about, it says um, on your comment, page five of eight, all lighting except for sign lighting will be dark sky compliant. Is the sign lighting going to Yeah, we'll comply. The, 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 the sign lighting will apply, comply with whatever the, the Lakeville bylaw requires. Right, so I don't think it's a dark sky lighting, well. but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, and then uh, talking about the cro the sidewalk, but could we also consider a crosswalk here, considering if, if they're going to try to across the uh, across the um, entrance, the, the, their driveway. Well, I was I I was thinking one oh one oh five because I mean it's a it's a very busy road and just it, like I would hate to see people trying to cross without a crosswalk there. Oh, there geez, a crosswalk down at CVS. That, that's why. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't think so they'd that's have to walk the way. way. We've, We've got, got a crosswalk proposed here, and I think it's a bad idea to try to get people out to Route uh, 79 and cross the street here. I don't think DOT would allow it, to be quite honest. No, I think she's talking about a crosswalk. 
across 105. Oh, yeah, but right here we're showing one. Right. We, have, we have every Just intention of having a crosswalk right. Right there. there. Yes, absolutely. But and I believe the if, if they continued walking that sidewalk in front of CVS, there's a crosswalk at the lights. Yes, there is. That you could actually hit the thing and yep. safely cross there. It's, and it's not, it's neighboring property, so only yep. probably less than 100 yards. Yes, you cross that, swing into the office and say hello. Right yep. there. <laughs> Um, oh, and then has there been any traffic study done? I didn't know if there was. We have not yet done a traffic study. Um, if you look at the last page of the sheets, we, we meet the safe um, site stopping distances. I think there's a calculation of 365 feet. And in one side, we're 415. And on the other side, we're, we're at 500 plus feet. Um, I'm not sure that um, we're going to impact traffic there that much. If, I'll leave that up to the board. If, if Which Does the abutting par parcel have oh, a study? Yeah, that yeah. That yeah. we, have, we do have one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Did that take yes. this into consideration as well, the, um, the storage warehouse? That. We can review that um, traffic study for um, next door and compare it to what the expected traffic volume would be from this development. Okay. Just because it's, it's such a bad a area, like that, the funeral home, whenever they have a funeral or a wake or service, they, they have to have the detail there. Right, right. You know, um, we've been waiting for this traffic light to go in not far from here. And just the amount of accidents it's, that's that's my main concern um and then um are these going to be leased or sold do you know? right now i think the plan is to rent them all out so um both or will be the owner of everything and then so will you have some sort of a lease agreement that we could look at along with this sure okay. yeah it'll be managed by a professional management company and they'll take care of the just because my only stuff. concern is that senior component. I know I'd like to just yeah, you know see problem. how that's going to be written in there. Somebody will be like, will the somebody from the rental agency be in the front building, or at least a portion of it? Or so I I plan on taking the second floor of that building. Okay. Um, so it's just me and one other person in my office. So usually there's only two two vehicles there. Okay. I, I do engage. Could, oh, just oh, state your name. Just yep. go. Uh, Bo McMahon, manager of. Uh, Main Street Real Estate Holdings, LLC. Um, I do engage with a professional property management company out of Middleborough that currently manages all my properties. They use the mass standard lease form. Um, so they're they're right down the street. So they, they will be available and will probably carve out a small portion on the second floor if they need to meet with tenants, if there's any concerns for signing leases. So they'll be right there on site. Okay. I, I think Michelle's point with that is just, we are applying for the uh, you know age restricted housing and we just want to this could go towards like those affordable housing stock possibly or is that correct the, the well, well my main concern is just that senior portion because i know the way that the bylaw is written it's it's kind of it's loose. loose and i just wanted to see what sort of agreement you'll come up with because you know someone could be there you know over 55 when they move in and and what happens next is you know the grandkids moving in nope. next or <laughs> we'd like to see the best possible option to try to keep yep. it age restricted yep. really i think that's our intent yes. you good michelle that's all yep. jack do you have anything you have your parking allows for handicapped parking as well yes there's two spaces right there for the, the building that meets the requirements yeah as long as there is the uh, access to CVS, I think for the age restricted folks, I think is, I think is one of the most necessary things to do as far as it, we talk about the parking and the sidewalks and all that. Nora? I'm just concerned about visitor parking. <clears throat> I think this is, there's a lot going on in this area, but I think we'd be wrong not to have something allocated for visitor parking, especially in a senior. Uh, over 55, I live across from one, and sometimes there's more visitor cars than residentials. We'll take a look and see if we can uh, squeeze in some visitor parking. 
Super. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, just snow removal, too. I don't know. Is there a snow removal? Yeah, if you look on the, I guess the whole plan, Bob. One of the plans, uh, I Yeah, it's on the erosion control plan. Um, I apologize. There's, there's, it's called up for right here, right here, right here. Oh, okay, I see it. Okay. And I think there's probably a few spaces in the back as well. Okay. Uh, just to go through letters we have a letter from uh, the Board of Health health agent sees no reason for denial suitable soils for subsurface sewage disposal uh, as we said before I just glossed over it but uh, fire chief uh, said he reviewed the plan our previous proposal made suggestions they were taken care of uh, and then you acknowledged you had the letter from Mark, the planner. So uh, you had something else, Mark? Just, just for uh, <clears throat> clarification, you would need a curb cut permit from Mass right, Highway, yeah. so they will look at things like sight distances. Shaps, they go really fast. <laughs> <laughs> See you in like a year. <laughs> so, it, you know, I don't think we, we're not going to hold you up over that. I, I know the process. Uh, you know, it'll obviously to do this project, you'll need that. So, as, you know, it'll just be sort of a conditional part of the, the approval process that Absolutely. we're not going to stop you from going forward. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to continue if they didn't allow it. But I think that it's pretty standard. and They just want you to meet their requirements. And I know everything you design there meets it. So uh, last question, Mark. Sorry. Go ahead. Peter. So the um, um, a guardrail is proposed. It's really only shown on that one uh, that you just spoke of, the, um, the drainage. It's quite a substantial guardrail. Is there a detail of it? Just because uh, it goes literally from all around the driveway of Unit 16, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I thought there was a guardrail detail on here. Is there? Okay. I, I may be mistaken. I, I thought if there is a there 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 we will should be involved in it. My bad. I really well. didn't notice it until I zoomed in on this. Yeah. On this. I, I, I don't see detail. We'll add it to the plan. We'll get that. We'll get What's that it going to be made of? Do you know? Probably wood. It's probably going to be wood. Yeah, wood? Okay. Wood. Yeah, it, it, it has to be all around that one guy's driveway. How that gets that steep on the other side? Is that closely? The, the infiltration basin is right on the other side. Same thing with the other drive. Well, no, yeah. same thing with the, the T of the um, turnaround. Right. Okay. The other thing we'll do to clarify that, we'll get them on this site plan. So it stands out more. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I guess the only concern I have during construction is uh, the way that the road roadway is pitched. I, I know that you have it pitching away to the outside Cape Cod berm to funnel the water to the two catch basins on the, the turnaround. Uh, but just during construction, before the, the retention ponds are seeded and everything, I, I would anticipate a little bit of wash out there. You might want to consider a little bit of silt fence at the top of the retention pond, just beyond the roadway. Okay. Just to, it, it's really, it's more of a, I don't want to use the into the wind analogy, but, uh, just so you're not doing things five times. No, no, that's, that's so you got a pretty good pitch along that whole thing, and before the Cape Cod berm goes in, the water's just going to be running off into all those You're right. No, that's, an excellent, that's an excellent suggestion, and keep, keep the silt out of the infiltration basins. Yeah. You know? uh, so based on tonight's conversation and you guys talking to the zoning enforcement officer, when would you like to come back? Well, I guess the, the, when do we expect your um the review comments do you, have, do you have any idea we have the proposal here but i don't know right. we, um i wasn't able to get in touch with uh, scott today but uh, 
probably within a couple weeks, a week, you know. I mean, I think um, it would go hand in hand with the review for CONCOM. Okay. Um, kind of, it would make sense uh, because there are wetlands do you want right him down at the bottom To proceed of the, the review of the plans as drawn, or do you want to talk to Nate first? I think at this point, if he hasn't undertaken anything, let me reach out to Nate uh, tomorrow or Monday and try to nail it down with him because if, if they haven't started their review and there's a, a problem, but yeah, if you have sense. a significant change, it yeah. might make sense yeah. to not review it uh, twice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. I, I guess at this point, Mr. Chairman, um, maybe 30, 30 days, is that too long? 30 days out. So our April 13th meeting? Yeah, that'd be the, fine. The, the first meeting in April? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so I, I make a motion to continue this public hearing until April 13th at 7 p.m. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> See you then. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. There's two of you. It's just asphalt. It's very minor. The minorest of uh, like curves. Mm -hmm. Is that going to take public questions here? Uh, would you guys actually mind if we? Ask some public questions and that said, I'd like to make a motion to retract the previous motion to continue at this point and reopen the hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh Mike the well, this room. So if anybody would like to come up and ask any questions, make any comments regarding this proposal. Please step right up to one of the microphones. Uh, Mark, I'm John Gregory. How are you doing, John? I was at the site today to talk to you. <laughs> um, your CVS, and I'm looking for both. Well, bottom line is, Concern the, the business plan and the, the, these things being built and staying vacant. I understand now they're the rental, not being for sold, not for sale. So, what's the what's, has there been any presentation of the market of these type of units at that particular location between a drugstore and a two-story storage facility? So what? I don't think we'll, given the demand for housing these days, I don't think we're going to have any issue renting them out, especially if they're over 55, there's a huge demand for one or two bedroom units. So is there some data that the citizens like myself could, could see that to back that up? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so the, the Lakeville, uh, Bo McMahon again, the Lakeville Housing Production Plan specifically calls out cluster style housing for 55 and older, and they refer to some data that backs that up. So that's the draft that... There is an existing housing production. Oh, the 2017 yes. one. Okay. And then there was a meeting with the 20... Yep, the, the, 22 the plan. On. We're still working on that one. We're actually okay. having it on our discussion tonight. So I can see some demographics in that that show the market. In fact, it, yeah, but that, that plan is 10, 15 yeah. years old. So the new plan that you're working on, will need updated information. Okay. But that, that's generally the way it's going these days. Okay. Well, all right, so there's a market for it, and uh, just have a you know, fear that the lake will be saddled with empty units that can't be sold, won't be habitated, because it's, you know, but actually, you guys want to make a profit in the business that you're running, so. Uh, right. Okay, well, that's my main question. Thank you. I'll refer to the production plan, right? for some demographics. On he did refer to the housing production plan. Yeah. And it, it, like I said, it's on discussion tonight. We have, I don't think I have a full copy of the draft, but that should be coming out soon as well. Okay. And it, there is a call for smaller units uh, in what we've been working on. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not a, a surprise thing I and mean, he's not doing something that's way out of the realm. Okay. And even within the mixed use zone, that's what he's applying under mm -hmm. the mixed use zone. Okay. Right. Any uh, other surveyor pins at the site now? Where you, I mean, 
Welcome to the Trap Sea. From these drawings to the land now. Yeah, there's there's four corners staked out. Um, I don't know if they're magnetic pins or actual stakes that you can see, um, mm -hmm. but it is it is surveyed. Okay. I, I don't know if they're visible to the eye or you need their pin detector to see it. Well, there's a bunch of wooden stakes with orange fluorescent paint around the CVS drive through lot, and there's a couple of wooden stakes at the uh, CVS entrance on the 105. It, it's safe to assume those are at them. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Sue? No. All right. Uh, being that there's no other comments, I move to continue this hearing until April 13th at 7 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks again for your time. Again. Sorry about Thank that. You. Thanks. Uh, So next item on our agenda is the housing production plan to review the changes. Everybody got a copy of this in there? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we did get, we got the revised copy, but it was like 4.30 and I didn't see it until after 5, so I didn't even have a chance to really look at it, so. But yeah, this was just, this is a summary. Yes. That and was, then that I was didn't a see summary, it. And then I saw I, the full, the full draft, plan. yellow highlighted. Exactly, and that's that's what she sent over today. So I forwarded it out to the board today, and I also forwarded it out to the board selectmen as well. Uh, does anybody on the board have any comments regarding the changes? I saw all were uh, made except for one. It's just the way that it needs to be in there on item two on the the list. I'd like to still read through the draft and just see, you know, what sort of. Yeah, what, what did you say in your email is next Wednesday? Yeah. Um, your next, your, no. Uh, well, she would like any comments back to her by next Wednesday so okay. she can incorporate it into a more of a final draft for your, and include the pictures and all the other things to really make it a proper yep. presentation um, for your meeting in two weeks. And actually, Mr. Chair, if I may, so the one thing I did notice after the fact, after, you know, last uh, planning board meeting, is that our previous housing production plan, it actually did include um, the quantity of units needed per year, because it's a 0.5% of our year-round housing. If we reach that in um, uh, subsidized housing inventory, then that gives us one uh, year of... That's the 19 unit number right now the 19 year 19 number unit right now so i didn't see where that's listed in this new version of the housing production plan um, i'm not sure that's still applicable to the housing production plans but we can check to see it it's is. still applicable it's a, an applicable number for that for yeah if for, this a is goal, about 40 for a goal for a goal for annual okay. goal to yes. say we've, we've reached our mm -hmm. annual goal but it just so I, I will check to see about the annual goal. And I don't know. I just, I guess that I, I tried to go back and compare it to the existing one, to this draft. And I, I hear what she's saying because, you know, the one that she, that is a no is the talking about housing section is too negative. So instead of changing that, you know, it's more of a reason why to leave it as sounding negative. But when you look at the previous one, I don't. I don't see that same negativity and I it, it talks about what units we have put in um, <clears throat> etc so it, it does still bother me that you know even even with the immense growth and, and building and etc yes right now the Fed is raising interest rates which has nothing to do with late bills you know well, housing I, production yeah but I, I think what they're required to put in some information about just housing inequities in general. And, and, and not that part, just the, the way I, that it's written in like more about, you know, negative connotations. Yeah, if, but I think that's the reality of housing inequities is that they're just not like a positive thing, but then they need to be pointed out and... Well, I don't no, think it's, we're disputing it's, that, that just needs uh, to, they need to be couched differently mm -hmm. so it doesn't come off so negatively. Yeah. Okay. So, 
I mean, are there specific paragraphs that you feel could be those the words could be altered either Nora or Michelle and would well, you make a suggestion I, I, I will I just got this at 4 30 and haven't yeah. read through it but I'll read yeah. through it tomorrow and I'll send over to Mark my comments okay yeah. <clears throat> I would recommend that that if you guys and, and again I understand it, 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 it when you say negative I assume you mean they're calling out what they think are deficiencies Correct. It's right. not that they're no. not being disparaging, but they're just calling out deficiencies where maybe you don't agree that they're there in the level that they're calling them out. Right. When we've had, you know, inc incremental growth and it's, it makes it sound as though, oh, we're we not put a lot of it, affordable but... units in and right. Okay. So I would recommend that both of you go ahead and add some language, change some language, make suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be included in that correspondence and send it on to Mark mm -hmm. and it can be mm -hmm. just forwarded along to, to Taylor and hopefully that we can come to a, a middle ground that's doesn't sound as uh, unpositive. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, outside of that, it, can we move on from this topic, you think, with that? Oh, um, I didn't know, Mark, I'd asked about a time frame for when we can expect to have the, uh, the 40R um, determined. I know it was February through March. Here we are, mid-March. Yeah, um, they're coming back in two weeks. Um, Did you ask her? I, I can certainly find out and send oh. out an email um whether she'll have that um compliance done by in two weeks or whether it'll be like just just ask later. a date would be great to okay know. yep all right so with those suggestions you guys will pass along we'll move on from the uh housing production plan and hopefully that'll come back also there. also to let let the planning board know is that once you approve the plan it for it gets forwarded on to the select board for their approval as well and then it gets submitted to dhcd so. okay so we'll have that on our agenda for the next meeting yes. so in one week taylor will get all these suggestions and in two weeks we'll have the mm -hmm. final draft thank, thank you, you. Yes. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is discussion uh, regarding one-stop grant applications, uh, which Mark, you put together a memorandum. Uh, I'll briefly summarize. Uh, you were applying for three separate grants, traffic study for the main uh, Bridge Street light. Uh, second was uh, improvements, uh, I'm gonna say uh, major work to the Peach Barn at Betty Snack. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, the John Pond Park would have some bathrooms and bigger facilities put in over there. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, I can go over each of them in a little more detail if you'd like, but, uh, or answer any questions that the board may have. So I guess uh, the I, I guess I just want to tie them each to an entity. The Mass Works grant for the Bridge Street Lights. I would say that's mostly driven by the board of selectmen would um say that's fair or well i i um i don't know necessarily know whether these are driven by any one particular board but um uh, it was under discussion before i arrived so Mr. i don't Chair, know I, th I thought there had been if i remember from one of the select board meetings over two million dollars already approved uh for that light at 105 and, and bridge yeah, yeah back in 2019 so yeah so there's money in a bond bill but there are lots of bond bills get passed with long lists of projects that, and many of them never get funded so um so although it's it's in a bill it doesn't mean that the money will ever be released so um this would be the funding to do the engineering for that uh intersection yeah because that intersection requires probably three hundred thousand three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of engineering to redesign it with turning lanes traffic lights 
side, you know, moving sidewalks. <laughs> I was just under the impression it had already been done. Uh, so I believe we do have the money. That was what Senator Rodericks had said, is that right. we have the money, but the town is responsible for the engineering portion. So that would be the remaining uh, responsibility for the town, which I don't quite understand why, if this is a state road, that the town is responsible for any of it. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, I'm all for grant money. I just but, don't want to have grant money for something that maybe has already been funded. Or, well, I so I don't think this, if it's just the engineering, but I will say that this Mass Works grant is one of the grants that's tied to that commuter rail housing. So if now we have a carrot, that means that if we take the carrot, now we have to comply because we're dependent on it. That is my problem with this grant. And if so, if we're only looking for $300,000 and compared to $200 million for a new school, um, I think we have to weigh the uh, financial burden compared to the uh, benefit. The second application for the peach bond at Betty's Neck. I have a problem with that just because it's an underutilized property. I know that the improvements that are being proposed in theory would maybe draw more use, but I think you'd have to pry the key from somebody's hand so that it could be open to the public. So, um, yes. So, I mean, the, origi the, the original purpose, and it's in the conservation restriction, is that the, the, the property be used as a visitor center and education center. Uh, outdoor, you know, to the public, to the public, yes, <laughs> yes, for the, and for the public. So, no problem with that one. so I think uh, once once this, um, you know, uh, these improvements are made, um, it should be available and open to the public when there's some staffing there to open it. You know, perhaps on the weekends. Again, I don't know the. Um, intricacies of the APC funding. I know they do fund rangers and probably on the weekends when people would be using them, but I don't know exactly the operations of the APC. So, uh, and I, 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 You bring up a good point with the staffing because I think that's a potential pitfall with all these grants is the costs. It's great to get the infrastructure built, but there will be a continuing cost with staffing, electricity, heating, if there's plumbing. Uh, so th those should be a concern for everybody just to mm -hmm. know that there will be a tax bill that goes along with them after the fact. Uh, and I think th the same thing about the John Pond Park, but I, I also do think that that has far more usage. So it's on oh, that its gets... basis, way more beneficial. Yes, yeah, that park gets a, a lot of usage from several different leagues. So, yeah. so, uh, so again, that, that's my biggest concern is the the potential costs to run some of the facilities after they get built. But uh, uh, so that's a good update. I mean, would you want to go into any of this any further, or is, I, I think um, I'm, I'm good with. What we're talking Unless about. anyone has questions. I mean, Does anybody have any questions? No. I mean, I share your concern with, you know, ongoing expense, maintenance. Um, it's great to get it up front, but who foots the bill after the grants are gone? And I don't want to pay for a study <laughs> on what it would cost to run something like that. I think that's more wasted money, but yeah. it'd be nice to know just an estimation of what it would cost. Just say, I guess, use like maybe the senior center as an example of what it costs to run something like that. And <clears throat> well, what's it cost to run the snack bar at um... Ted Williams? Yeah. Well, I think that the facility that's being proposed there is much bigger, though, because it's bathrooms and plumbing. And for which? John Pond Park. Yeah, for, so for John Pond Park, although we haven't designed the building yet, um, I did meet with the Parks Commission. And uh, what we're looking at. Uh, doing is um, some storage bays for equipment for the Parks Commission, for the Softball League and the Blooper Ball League. 
of each have their own equipment. And then, um, you know, two or three individual stalls um, that would be accessible, have running water. Um, and the separate system. Rest, yes, individual, yeah, bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. And, Anything um, about addressing the parking there? Uh, well, yes, as part of... So I can get them off my front lawn? Oh, okay. <laughs> so as part of, as part of this um, uh, renovation, it would also include um, kind of a, a relaying out the parking area, expanding it, um, and defining parking so that it isn't haphazard, is, as I've been ex it's been explained to me, that... Uh, it's not very efficient, um, and so that um, so that, that that issue can be um, addressed. Also, we may do a little uh, drainage improvements as well. Um, and it'll, we'll install a septic system. Okay. Anybody else? All right, uh, thank you for the update. Uh, next item on the agenda number five is discussion regarding the Lakeville Code project, the final draft, which I have uh, a memo from town clerk. Please be advised the last phase of the town's bylaw codification is now complete. Next step will be adopting the bylaws by town meeting. Uh, we have two draft motions included along with uh, I guess it's what you call this the draft of um, so that is just a draft of the general bylaw changes more for your information we would not uh, the planning board would not be holding a public hearing on the general bylaw changes that's a uh, select board that would be yes the select board and so we have a zoning bylaw but the, the warrant article for readopting um the zoning bylaw with it being renumbered um so do we need to set a would, date or has that already been done for a public hearing for that so uh kathy and i kind of reviewed um the date and felt that we should do that on the um, first meeting in april so that's i believe the 13th so you got a month, so that's sufficient for the three weeks, right, Kathy? It usually takes you mm -hmm. to do the two postings and... Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. Everybody's good with a public hearing on April 13th. Well, that's the computer. Works for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh... All right, going to keep us moving along here. We have a discussion regarding 40B and 40R comparisons. You guys got a couple of printouts. I think Barbara Mankowski provided one of these. Did you get the other one, Michelle, or did you, Nora? Oh, this is actually from Mr. Gregory. Okay. Correct, but through through Mr. Gregory. <laughs> uh, so, it, it, anyhow, it goes through the comparison, uh, and this is really just for our discussion. So, uh, the, we and the public understand the difference between 40B and 40R. The detail is that. What's in the agenda, the PDF is missing the word draft at a diagonal slant, which was on the... the what no, came it's from there. The, it's there. Oh, oh, thank you. I didn't see it on the PDF. My, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so, requires local adoption corresponding to DHCD approval zoning district. 40B does not, and 40R does. And that was one of the reasons we discussed at a recent previous meeting. 
about the possible overlay of 40R on the hospital property because it's required if we wanted to see a 40R rather than a 40B. The maximum percent of AMI considered affordable, both are 80%. The minimum percent of units that must be affordable, 40B is 25% or 20% at 50% AMI, and the 40R is 20% or 25% age restricted. Uh, the minimum term of affordability, both are 30 years. Local approval authority for a 40B is the Zoning Board of Appeals, and for a 40R project is the Plan Approval Authority, which is the Planning Board in this case. We are the Plan Approval Authority. Uh, zoning approval for a 40B is comprehensive permit pursuant to 40B, uh, Chapter 40B. And for a 40R project, the plan approval pursuant to local DHCD approved smart growth zoning established pursuant to Chapter 40R. Uh, the initial subsidized housing index eligibility of affordable units generally is uh, a 40b is a comprehensive permit and 40r is a plan approval uh decision the limited dividend or profit limited requirements there are yes profit limited requirements for 40b and none for 40r uh, requirements that at least 10 percent affordable units contain three plus bedroom units is a yes for 40b and it's currently not required for 40R. Strongly encouraged though. Uh, allows for non-ancillary, non-residential mixed use. 40B is no and 40R is yes. And can qualify for municipal or associated incentive bonuses from school reimbursement payments uh, from the DHCD and the Commonwealth. That is a big fat no for 40B and a yes for 40R. So those are the general differences. If anybody wants to take a look at this, so leave it up for public viewing. Uh, anyone else want to any comments? Or we have another more lengthy one. I'm not going to read the whole comparison. Um, my only question about this is under the limited dividend profit <clears throat> limit requirements. I know it says yes for 40B and no for 40R, but is there any leeway? Like, could we put a profit limit on the 40R as well? Because I'd be on board with that 100% if that was the case. Well, isn't that the, uh, isn't isn't that's the lure? Before? That's the lure to the builder, uh, you know? Right. The lure to the town is the last one. Well, I mean, 40B is it's still obviously a lure to the builder, well, even with that. You, you, you want to sway them so what, that what, we can what get is, tax what, money. What did you say was the lure? Well, because Peter said, you know, isn't that the lure to not have the profit cap? But um, my argument is that, you know, with the 40R, it's still the same as the 40B as far as, you know, the affordable units and going in... Uh, denser you know area uh, denser higher density um against the bylaws so, so i guess i'm just well if you tied that together with the minimum number of units that must be affordable and then you say yes you limit the profit requirements right if those two like to a builder he doesn't look at anything else except for those two items mm -hmm. let's say that's what they do right mm -hmm. they, they would say how many do i have to build that are that are and and how much can i make mm -hmm. and, and to me 40r is is advantageous to the town and the 40b is advantageous to the builder hmm. it's just my opinion from a units wise but not from the profit standpoint <clears throat> 40R becomes advantageous to the builder Correct. with the profit. Right. Right. Allowed profit, whereas you can't profit over a certain amount with a 40B. And you're held, your feet are held to the fire of more affordable units with a 40B. Right. right. So you still have less affordable units with the 40R. But so I just, you just I got guess... paid hundreds of thousands of dollars toward the schools with a 40R, which you got nothing right. for right. the 40B. And, you're gonna have and a we more have more control, control on it than 
40 feet. Right, but right. as as more communities join the program and create these these zones, that money gets dispersed more so, just like we've seen with the CPA disbursement from the state. So it used to be 100% match. So just like with that, those those funds that are going mm -hmm. to those 40-yard communities, it is going to get lower and lower. So, but and we don't know. Than zero. Right, but how long does it last? And, you know, that, that's just my only caveat with it. I think it was one one form, not this one, but it said it can vary from as low as ten thousand dollars to upwards of six hundred thousand, right? It, it, oh, I thought it was three thousand per student. I thought that in forty R. Yeah. But tip, was it typical payout? There was a there. There's an initial Maybe payout, was, and then there's also the per okay. year, and I think the per year was two thousand. All right. Per student. No, it's if. It costs twelve thousand dollars to put a student in the school system, and the excise and property taxes on the unit were three thousand dollars. Then the state will give nine thousand dollars to make the full reimbursement of that education, as long as the funds hold out. As long as somebody within the town files the paperwork too. Mm -hmm. The excise tax, uh, based on the based on the um, based right. on the vehicle uh, I, I, I'm just going off what they okay. told me that there were two taxes yeah. property tax and something else and I, I want to say it was excise tax all right so, good talk <laughs> yeah. next discussion is regarding inclusionary zoning bylaw which we have a draft in our packet does everybody get a chance to read that No? I did not. So it's basically the same draft that was in the last packet. The only difference is I put it into a Word document, and these blue boxes are just click and delete. So um, it, it, it kind of writes it for you, and then the blue boxes has the comment as to how you want to tailor it to your community. So I read it, and I kind of felt like that'll stop all development in town <laughs> <laughs> but at least when you have these bigger developments you're still getting units towards your subsidized housing inventory rather than having to continue to add them all right so over the past four years i think we've had one development but when i say one, one come in front of the planning board mm -hmm that had more than 10 homes and it had 11 with Shamrock, that subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, uh, help me with this one, Mark, if LeBaron, if we had that bylaw in place, would LeBaron be subject to this? No. Because they went 40B. Because they're 40B, that's mm -hmm. correct. If you had a 40 yard, it probably wouldn't be subject to this either. So this would really be all other developments. Yeah, all other developments of which you're really talking about subdivisions because you don't have multifamily housing development allowed elsewhere in the community or, or anything else. So you're really looking at if you ever get a large subdivision over 10, 10 houses. I mean, this is, you know, some towns like to do this, other towns are like, this is gonna have a nominal impact on affordable housing in the community, and they're just not interested in, in doing this. The, the true way to really impact your, your housing is to be proactive about it, to work with 40B developers, to try and get some rental projects where you can count all the units within within a project as opposed to just counting the affordables and a for sale. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's not, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, um, I'm not gonna, I know it's, it's not going to do much toward Im improving the inventory. Let's well, Mr. Chair, if I may, so this was actually one of like the first items in our previous housing production plan as like the best option to go with and 
my thought is that with all of the land that we have pr protected in Chapter 61, as if those come out of Chapter 61 protection, we do have large parcels that could potentially become subdivisions. So I think if we get something like this in place, rather than seeing those all those units that come in as a larger subdivision, now pushing us farther away from that 10% that we need for that safe harbor from 40B, this still helps us get there. So I do think it is worth you know, it's worth consideration. I, I just think that the number of the number of homes ten hurts all only the little developer and the big guy will just go forty P and get us anyway. I just think I'd I'd want to raise that number from ten. So it does say that in here, yeah. and you can. You know, I think I'd want to go twenty or twenty five. So you're talking about a substantial development, not you know, somebody who had 20 acres, they're going to put in nine or 10 homes. They're just going to say, I'll do nine. I'll just make the lots a little bigger and do nine. Mm. And, and there's language in there so that somebody can't phase the project. Right. So you'd be catching them so they can't do nine and then nine and get away with 18. Yeah. Uh, so you have any thoughts on that, Peter? Um, like prior to prior to Shamrock Estates, you were saying the last big one was what um, Great Cedar Crossing, I believe that 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 just closed out, right? Down uh, heading down between the lakes there. Yep. On, yeah, probably that that must be between twenty or and thirty units in there. Um, I don't see the one of those coming anytime soon because, but you never know. You have to pull out a lot of property out of sixty one A to do mm. something like that, but. Um, I, I agree with you. Ten, ten is um, too little. You know, go go higher to to ha give people a little bit of a, a cushion to still build in town. You know, you don't want to slam the door completely. Well, we definitely should think about it because I don't. And it's you know, like Mark said, be be proactive. And to Michelle's point, I think it would help. Uh, it would be good development if you had subdivisions that were mostly acre and a half or acre and two thirds lots. And then you had a two that were three quarter acre lots because that's the zoning relief you give a developer to get a little more land out of it. And they'd all be for sale homes that people would buy. That's my biggest problem with the whole affordable thing is you, the government's just got their foot on your neck if you ever bought one of those, you're never going to be able to sell it for a profit. You never can get out from under it. It's not like a stepping stone. It's just a subsidy. You want to move on? You just, you almost took a hit because you never got any equity built, equity built out of yeah. a home you paid for for 10 or 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing else, I'm going to move on. Uh, number eight, planning board goals. Oh, there was something else? I'm going into the HPP. On the draft that we reviewed recently, I noted in the header and in the foot of the, of the words smart energy toolkit. So I went looking in mass.gov for those words and found a whole ton of stuff with where communities in planning can make their communities more energy efficient. So my question is completely aside from all the other burdens and, and all the wonderful things you all do, because right? you're so incredibly busy with all the development going on, what's being looked at with, for the, is the smart energy toolkit anywhere on the radar screen or in the attention of the, in this board or any other board in Lakeville? I'll be honest, tonight's the first time I ever read about it. I have to assume it has to do with solar and some other stuff, but I'd have to look into it myself a little bit more. I'm wondering if it might be part of the Energy Advisory Committee. You know, we'll fall over into that group with Nate and, and you know, all the folks in that committee. But it just struck me because that's an interest of mine. And there's a ton of stuff on NAS.gov under those, you know, 
gets into not just solar, thermal and photovoltaic, but transportation, I mean, all sorts of stuff that Mark studied and makes it, you know, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you for that. It's certainly something we should consider for the future. Oh, yeah. And, you know, as you look at making some of these structures operate, or the cost to operate bathrooms at whatever park you're talking about, you know, some of these toolkits would make the cost offset, operate, you know, way, way less. Yep. So, okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so planning board goals. Nora, if you don't mind, I'm gonna let you spearhead this. We had a conversation thanks, and you, thanks. you seem to <laughs> offer it, so. <laughs> yes, I did. And you did um, a nice little a spreadsheet. Quick pass out uh, that I did um, late yesterday. I think everybody got a pass out. I think Mark had put together. Uh, one of my concerns when we look at and talk about goals is we don't want to drill down to the point of what makes a goal happen or work, uh, but we need uh, what we call in this goal industry smart goals, where the goal is very specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, uh, it's relevant, uh, and it's time bound. So as an example, I saw on um, the goals that Mark sent over, and I think it grabbed a lot of our attention, was something about uh, adult entertainment. Okay, that Just to be clear, <laughs> it wasn't this Mark. No, not this Mark. <laughs> 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 okay. Although, never mind, I won't even say that. Um, and that may be a reasonable part of a review of zoning or a review of, of property use uh, type of things, uh, but it's not anything that I would drill down to make it the specific goal rather than the review of the zoning. And I think as we look at goals, they have to be goals that can be short term within a year. And then we have to look at long term goals and you should never have at any point in time more than 10 goals, especially with a planning board with everything else that's going on. So what I'm proposing to get this off the road and finally done is if we can, between now and the next meeting, take a look at the goals that Mark sent out, I sent out, and I think Michelle has some feedback on them as well. She and I have spoken. And I'll collect the feedback and then we'll come up with a document that would be the overall ruling goals that this board wants to move forward with understanding there's a lot of other things that have to occur uh, with the board, but we need to have goals that we can answer to the public about. You know, as an example, we every year should be reviewing um, wording in certain bylaws or zoning just because things change in, in our town. And we need to always be up, keeping that updated. That's my story and I'm going to stick to it. Good. Uh, Mark, do you have anything on this? Well, <clears throat> but I think, um, yes, for, for general zoning issues that come up, you identify in a bylaw, let's say you're reviewing a subdivision, uh, uh, something under some section of our bylaw, an accessory apartment, let's say, or a home occupation that comes, or something that might come before the board, a site plan review. And you decide, determine that the language in the existing site plan review bylaw, there's some wording that's inaccurate or that you want to modify either to make it stricter or make it clearer. Those are things you would bring forth. But when you're looking at um, adopting, revising an entire section of the site plan review bylaw, such as we did with signs or site plan you know, site plan review itself. That's a real project and that in and of itself requires like putting it down in a goal with a specific timeline. Um, same thing for, you know, so that's what I sort of started to do with the, with the, the zoning where I broke out certain things 
and and put it in um, on this time timeline sheet. So. Right, and and I don't disagree with that. I think we're actually talking the same thing, except mm -hmm. it's you're breaking it down differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, what when you talk about the specifics, that's the work that has to go to accomplish the overall goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the overall goal, and then the work that goes into accomplishing right. it. Yeah. When you talk about during a, a hearing, if we hear or read of something that needs to be corrected or reworded, that's mm -hmm. something that occurs in the normal case of, of, of our business. I'm looking at those specific things that we as a planning board want to say to the public, okay, we need to look at uh, 40B, 40R. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we set that as an overall goal. We establish a timeline on when we want to accomplish it accomplish it and it's discussed at every meeting how we stand with the goals mm -hmm. okay and i just threw some examples down and i assigned it whether it's um only planning board or if it's planning board and support because there's a lot of things that the board does that are in conjunction with the support team and then there are things that the support team does that may be in, done in support of the planning board, but we're not necessarily directly involved in doing that. As an example, uh, having the- Housing production plan and surpad. Yes. Okay. We're not involved in actually producing that, okay, but the support team is producing it for us. Or when we talk about having the materials on the Friday before, which is was happening, we're not necessarily involved in making that happen. That's the support team but we are a benefactor of having that happen. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, may I ask uh, just this number 15, where did this come from? Adopt an adult entertainment overlay district. <clears throat> where did that come from? Uh, well, it's something that communities should have especially as you're a growing community because adult entertainment is uh, protected use and if you don't have a bylaw that um, kind of regulates where it can be and identifies exactly what it is um, if you allow retail let's say on main street you can get an adult bookstore in any retail space on main street if you own a is that the restaurant the comparison i've heard uh the building commissioner used it you'd liken it to the most similar use and that would be allowed well it is a, so an adult bookstore is a retail use right so and so but so it may right. not be considered desirable right so your point is you zone it separately from retail yes so you the do. most similar use mm-hmm selling whatever on Main Street, and now you're trying to create a zone where it's to push allowed. it to where it may never be able to go. Well, yeah, or, I, or it could go, but it's in a less objectionable location. That's correct. So a couple things. So this is not from a conversation that you've had from no, a it's, local developer. It's something that... So we do have a provision in our bylaws about adult bookstore, and I did speak to our zoning enforcement officer about this, and he did say that... Um, when you look at the definition, um, it talks about, um, you know, establishment having a substantial or significant portion of its stock in trade, books, magazines, videos, visual materials, and or other matter. Um, when you look up, and it, and it references Mass General Law, Section 31 of Chapter 272, at, so as defined. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the definition of matter in that law, um, it also includes live performance and dances. So we do have a provision that allows only by special permit in industrial zones, this sort of um, adult entertainment. So, mm -hmm. but, I, but I, I think so, so what has to happen is, is, because we're talking about goals, if that's right. something that we want to consider, that's gotta be a separate agenda. Right, so just, so just as like, as a consideration, yes, it may be something that we wanna revisit but it would ha it would be under right different that to me would not be a specific goal it would be one under the review of zoning right okay. the zoning. Mm -hmm. but as a standalone goal i think that's not one that we should as a board put down 
but it can be a subsection of reviewing zoning. So I can tell you right now, out of the list that you gave, I know it's tough to read it. It looks like didn't come through. It looks like I want to say we could combine these and get them down to ten fairly easily. Yeah, I think so. I think so, and that's what I, I uh, Mr. Chair, would propose. Is um, so I, I would like you guys to do that by the next meeting. Yep. And I'm not trying to tell you what to do as much as you guys have done a great job putting these charts and spreadsheets together. And I, I you know, I see one at Mark's. I think it's 20 or so, 18, 18. goals, and Nora, you had 13. Uh, I think anything that we consider. Oh, and all of our ordinary business doesn't mm -hmm. need to be on Correct. the goal. Correct. Uh, goals mm -hmm. or whatever list we're going to call this. But everything else that's not a weekly hearing or whatever normal business comes in the front of the planning board shouldn't be on there. And everything else, prioritize it, make a list of 10, and let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have so, that for the next meeting. I'll copy you, Mark. On, yeah, make sure Mark tomorrow. gets a copy. If you guys see something that's not on that list and you really think it should be on there, put it on there. And just make the suggestion back that we, you know, if it ends up being 11 or 12, that's fine. But I do think let's narrow it and make it not agenda items. And maybe we should have a discussion about the adult entertainment section, but... Yeah, I didn't realize there was that one definition in there. I'm not sure that <coughs> so how sufficient that, that is. See. I would have to review that. Yeah, review that. And if it doesn't have, need to be on the list because we do have that, great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I had was down here as goals is more tasks, like projects, right. yep. like things to accomplish is what how I, I interpreted your your goals. So, um, so I spread out over multiple years a long list of tasks. Some are relatively short term, some we're working on, and some are you know, two, three yep. years down the line because they will take time to do each of these things. So yeah. Kathy, that'll be on the next agenda. You got that? <laughs> are we keeping you awake? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> uh, all right. Next item on the agenda is some review, some zoning board of appeals, petitions. First one is uh, a sign, ID sign group 15 Main Street, which is the self storage on Main Street. Uh, I this did see this. This is the color of the sign? I believe so. Oh, I didn't get that. There was something? I oh. saw it. I got a glance of it, a glance of it, but it wasn't in my packet. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know where I saw it. I don't know if that's oh, true, re know. true representation of the color. Did you get that? Uh, it's in the um, it's in the packet okay. to, that got transmitted. It's on the it's on the link to the website. My initial thoughts are: we make a recommendation that the zoning board of appeals not grant any relief from the existing sign bylaw. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. We spent a lot of time to get that yeah. where it is, and um, I think we took a lot of feedback too from. Uh, um. So what they're specifically requesting is a special permit to have the illum internally illuminated portion and then to have the changeable copy portion. Those are both special permits. So that's... Um, is, is it struck through? Like, uh, did they revise that? So the internally, the internally illuminated portion is only for the top sign portion. The... Um, Size-wise, do they both comply with the size-wise? The they both comply with the thirty-two square feet combined. Combined or each? Combined. And then the changeable copy—I don't know the exact dimensions. The changeable copy is not lit, so that the only lit portion is the. So the um, only lit portion would be this the top. upper portion. Yes, that's correct. Huh. So they're looking for it to be lit, which is not to the bylaw, because the well, lit portion would be just, larger. It, no, the lit portion would comply with the 24 oh. 
square foot in size. In the nighttime. Uh, the, the but they're also the they're asking for a larger so sign, right? The, no. Changeable, not lit. You okay. know. Yeah, virtual mock-up night. Then you're going to have people, now you're going to have seniors living right there next to the storage facility and you get a light, lighted sign. Is it going all night? Um, I mean, it is a special <laughs> permit, so it is somewhat discretionary that, you know. What's it work out to more? It, it's just right there, I think. Square footage of the sign. Uh, I still say I'm not, I'm not for any relief from the sign bylaw that was, was created. We spent a lot of time on that. If, if, Mark, they're not asking for any relief. Any sign that is illuminated or um, has changeable coffee requires a special permit. They're not asking for relief. These they're just asking for a special they're permit. Just, as yeah, we, we allow a special permit. permit. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can still you record. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, technically, yes. isn't that larger than 24 square feet because you have changeable coffee and 24 square feet? Mm -hmm. So doesn't that then exceed the square footage of what we it's, allow? It's, um, the total sign is 36 square feet. Th 30. Isn't it should that? be 32 32. Feet. 32, sorry. Yes. 32. 32. So the... the 32. The maximum size is 32 square feet in total, and then they have an internally illuminated portion, which um, is 20, no larger than 24 square feet, and then the changeable copy portion, which was, should be no larger than 12 square feet. Changeable copy, can you just add, is that when you go out and literally like um, just change the letters? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Is that? It's going state of the art there. Uh, it's not a digital change. Oh, it's not, no, electronic. not There's not. a night version. If you, there's a night version where the bottom half is totally dark, then right. anything that uh, they slide in there. Like, mm -hmm. uh, 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 That's not more than 12 square feet. That bottom portion. It looks as big as the top. Well, they, they, there's, a, there's a comparison there. Uh, it, it, the, if the overall is 32, then it's about uh, about half, or a little uh, more than half on the top. Kind of. Um, and where is this situated on the property? Because it looks like it's going to be right up against where the new uh, office building is going to be going. Just curious. Yeah, I'm not. Seeing the picture it shows it with all that in the background, which I think is looking towards the CBS. So it sounds toward that way. Right. They wouldn't put it right out front. Why would they put Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. asking. Yeah. I'm not sure there wasn't a more specific site plan in the packet. So I don't I don't have that with me. By special permit, then that they have to show that it's not a nox, noxious use. I guess. Yeah, as long as it's within the guidelines, I say fine. I, I, I trust the uh, recommendation for hours of operation with the special permit. You know, the sign illumination goes out at a certain hour. Yeah, I believe we, yeah, we adopted something out. in the bylaw. We, yeah, we did. Which was. Except for emergency. Mm -hmm. Medical. Yeah. It was. Could we be concerned that it's not going to impact the housing that was they proposed early in the season? That's why, like I say, if we condition or make a recommendation that they condition the hours of operation within the special permit so that it's not lit at midnight, one in the morning, that they have to turn it out at. Sure. Said time, whether these, it's nine o'clock, ten o'clock. If these over five year olds go to bed at, as early as I do, it's gonna be a lot earlier than midnight. <laughs> Shut it off at six PM. Oh soon as Jeopardy's okay, over. Well um, So the, the bylaw eliminated. says eleven PM <laughs> to six AM unless it's a medical uh, facility. 
up. A little late for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A little late for you, isn't it? Yeah. I think our only comment is as long as it adheres to the bylaws. Mm. Yep. I well, like even just motion as such. Uh, even the consideration for the maybe those hours. You think those hours are good enough for next door to nineteen new units? Of yeah. Well, yeah. well, there's pretty good buffering. They're going to come back with a lot better way they built this and a lot of evergreens. And they chose they chose to build yeah, this is the build strip. houses and, on, a, I mean, uh, on a busy main street, next not to the other CBS. way around. Yeah, they chose right this. And this is, you know, this is the life they chose. Office building yeah. out front, exactly where the sign would be. Well, CBS is going to turn the light off. Well, you guys are about 200 feet back. Yeah, the owners decided that, but the residents may not know that. It's the same guy who owns both. So. I know, but the residents are going to come in there and say, oh, we're there, bro. They rent. I mean, as long as there's no, no like houses across the street, because I know even those dollars. We'll make sure they have good blinds. Like, okay, so <laughs> you need a motion for that, Mark? <laughs> Out of the yeah. building? Yeah, my motion is just that, uh, that, that we ask that they, it, you know, follow the uh, strict sign bylaws that we have right now, which I know they will. I have complete confidence in the, Yeah. <laughs> So I have a motion. Second. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It doesn't show. Uh, Garbett Pike, Staple Shores Road. Is that just a residential based on the yeah. address? So make a motion to not make any recommendation. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Approve the minutes for January 26th, 2023. Uh, looks good to me. Did yep, I you add anything? Yeah. So, I'm based on what I got from what was the conflict of interest. You can approve minutes if you weren't there. Oh yes, if you reviewed them. As long as you yeah, yes. yes. No. It, so. In two meetings, Peter, mm -hmm. somebody will be approving minutes from when you were here. And True. Okay. And so what Greg Corbo had explained was approving minutes is, he used the term, ministerial. It's <laughs> something that just needs to happen. So All right. you, you, if you weren't here, you are allowed to vote on them. But if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. No, the, we totally do have totally. had a quorum barely at the meeting. And if that's all the votes on it, we will. So I make a motion to approve the minutes uh, for January 26th as drafted. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, any correspondence, Mark? Do you want to talk about? Uh, saw a big email from uh, Berkeley, so, from Kathy, about Berkeley. Yeah, so that, we received that notice. Um, <clears throat> we talked about a it few, a, yeah, a few months ago. We talked about it before that it was going to be happening, but I guess the uh, people in Berkeley reached out to Kathy about that. So they're maybe hoping we have a wetlands bylaw. <laughs> well, you know, they're staying out of the wetlands, although there wasn't. They referenced a drainage plan. It wasn't in what the information that was submitted to us. Um, it appears that most of the work from the site plan drawing is on although the property extends a little bit into lakeville is all the work is on the berkeley side berkeley side because Does it come within the buffer zone though so well, they need to maybe do a filing with concrete well not like within so. not within lakeville because the wetlands extend across into <laughs> berkeley berkeley and then so the buffer zone is actually in berkeley because it's the wetlands that extend across so um I don't believe Con there's any sort of a comment on it, but yeah, what, what's interesting that. is I don't recall ever receiving a MEPA uh, notice on that property. I would expect that they would have uh, tripped off the requirement to have a MEPA filing because it is such a, a fairly substantial project. Um, but um, that's the only. Uh, um, the, we, we did get a couple things from uh, something about a garage and, and a decision notice um, in Freetown, but that's the only two notices we've gotten in okay. a month or more. Yeah. Uh, 
we're going to endorse the site plan for Millennium Circle tonight, mm -hmm. uh, which we already voted on, or do we need to vote it's, to sign? It's all been approved. It's right. Just, uh, I thought we already voted on it. We just had to sign it because they were going to make some changes that were the conditions that we kind of put on it. Right? I thought there was something that you had said. Oh, yes. Um, the parking um, scenario in the back. It was really I think it was, right? that's it was about the in the written filters, operation maintenance right. for the yeah. um, marijuana filter, the charcoal filters. No, to reduce the smell. Oh, oh, oh the oh, charcoal yeah. filters and yeah. the ventilation system. Yeah, but oh, but that's in the, in the, the condition the, of the approval, not on the plans. Uh, I'd ask to have it included in the maintenance plan on on the plans. Yeah, but it, yeah, but it's not in the. Is it referenced in the site plan? We asked, that's why we didn't sign it. We asked them to put it in. On, on to, the yeah. site? Okay. <laughs> so just announcing that our next meeting is March 23rd, 2023. It'll be here at the Lakeville Police Station. Mr. Chair? Yep. If I may, I just had two things. Um, one was I had requested uh, to the select board to have a joint meeting between planning board, select board of Lakeville and uh, planning board and select board of Freetown uh, just to have a discussion about the uh, commuter rail yep. zoning. So I'm hoping that that... I will follow up. I did speak to select woman Fabian. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a potential time to meet, but that has passed. So I'll follow up and see if I can. And then um, 310 Kenneth Welch. I just wanted to know where we are with a response from the select board for that no parking sign request. Um, I'm going to be having a meeting with the um, many of the parking heads with the owners of the property next week. So we'll have a better understanding of where they're going to be with their filings and with moving things forward because um, there are multiple issues with the property besides the timing of the site plan filing um, and conservation commission filing as well as water connection um, uh, allocations and, and things so i will have more information for you the next I don't meeting. think that answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we, we, uh, did, we did we did ask for a letter to be sent and then voted on mm -hmm. on a subsequent meeting. So was anything passed along to the board of selectmen? Mm -hmm. Have they responded to I it? I have discussed it with them, but I haven't. They did not send a specific memo to the board. That's correct because I felt that we are moving forward with addressing the problem. The problem is is that they're not moving the process forward. So. Um, and that's the purpose of next week's meeting. So you're going to meet with, I saw something recently, but Tark Vega and that's they, correct. Goddard Associates was doing the review for ConCon. That's what I saw. Okay. So I'm sorry, but oh, yes. so for me, this is two different items. This is site plan has nothing to do with the fact that we're sending a memo to the select board. And I did reach out to the select board and I was told that, you know, one of the members has not even seen a memo. So mm -hmm. this is a whole separate issue. Right. There's parking on town property. You know, if this was the Red Hand Brewing, they'd be all over it. But for some reason, it's on town property. We've asked to have a memo sent twice. And I don't know why no one, or, you know, not all select board members have received that. It's a significant problem. It, it's ongoing. <coughs> I mean, no parking today. signs or... So I don't know what, mm -hmm. so we voted twice to send a memo and it hasn't been done. There was just a conversation. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. Can we get a memo sent to them, please? I will do that. Okay. That'd be great. I mean, we were, I was trying, you know, part of trying to give them some flexibility and, and trying to address it, you know, it's properly. Um, but yes, it, you are correct that it is now beyond Plus, with the other issues that um, they haven't addressed at the site, um, it's, you know, to the point where they need to be um, so know, pushed. Aside from the memo, mm -hmm. 
and the parking. Yes. Do we see any progress and or light at the end of the tunnel with that property and moving forward with improvements? I'll know after next week. I mean, because it, it's supposed to be a comprehensive meeting with the fire chief and building commissioner and myself and the town administrator. So there are multiple issues. It's not yeah, just- Yeah, well, I know. I've just, heard about them all. Right. And I, I get it. And I, mm -hmm. I also understand that uh, we thought the, the, the parking thing is one facet in it. And it's almost like, you know, you may have been reluctant to, to move on that because they at one point they were moving and you felt like right. well there was why do i send a memo because yes. they're going to come in in a month with a plan and mm -hmm. yes. but so now it's almost like yeah i wish the memo was there because mm -hmm. 10 other problems have cropped up and right. it would have been just you yeah. know there was a new ownership group and they seemed to move things along <clears throat> rather quickly right away and then it, everything kind of stumbled so Please let them know. Yes, I will. Uh, that said, is there any other business, anybody else to bring anything else up for? That's it. Motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Meetings adjourned. Okay.